Dame Priti Patel. Speaker, um, I have to say, as having been the Home Secretary that negotiated the original Migration and Economic Development Partnership, I find it quite odd to be sitting in this debate today hearing some of the um, comments that have been made, in particular people running down the country of Rwanda in the way in which they have been. I just think that is absolutely appalling. And I say that because the partnership with Rwanda was established as a world-leading innovative way to tackle the challenges caused by mass migration and the displacement of people, Mr Deputy Speaker. It was carefully designed with our friends in the Rwandan government to do one thing that no one in this House has mentioned at all today, which is to raise the international bar when it comes to the treatment of asylum seekers with compassion and support when it comes to their resettlement. And I think it is quite astonishing that so far today, particularly on the part of the benches opposite, while they've been speaking down and talking down the government of Rwanda and Rwanda for the last 20 months, we should actually recognise and welcome the fact that it's a country that already supports and has resettled 130,000 refugees through schemes established with UNHCR and through international conventions. I won't give way, there is no time to give way, and the gentleman knows this. And, and effectively, these are the types of schemes that we need, the resettlement and working with third countries, to actually deal with this awful, awful abusive and illegal trade in people smuggling. And it's a stain, I have to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, on this House, with some of the awful comments that I've heard thus far about Rwanda <coughs> and this scheme, we have a moral imperative to raise the bar and effectively look at how we can be better as governments around the world to address these issues. And that is why when I negotiated and agreed the partnership in April 2022, we all knew it would face criticisms and legal challenges, and the government of the day was prepared for this. Um, I said it at the time, and in fact we gave some very clear statements in this House as to the steps that we would take forward. And it was in fact a year ago the High Court found the plans to be lawful. <coughs> the Court of Appeal ruled against the policy, citing concerns over the issue of refoulement, which are well known. But importantly, as the Supreme Court has since referred to as well, these are issues, and the Supreme Court has emphasised this, that the principles of the policy and the recognised the commitment given by the Rwandan government to make the partnership work, they are all fine and they are sound, but there are operational measures, Mr Deputy Speaker, that have to go further, which the government has since outlined through this bill, but actually through statements in this House, which would help to make this viable. Now, we all bear the scars, it's fair to say, and I don't envy the front bench right now. We've all bared the scars, and we heard my right honourable friend, the member for Newark, speak about this, the constant merry-go-round of legal challenges, whether through our own domestic courts or interference elsewhere, and by that I'm referring to Rule 39. I've got experience of dealing with Rule 39. There are organisations, campaigners and lawyers who clearly will do everything possible to frustrate the will of this House and actually the will for a democratically elected government, because that's what we are at the end of the day. We have to rise against these dogmatic beliefs, because quite frankly, there are too many organisations and individuals who are getting in the way and are actually effectively letting more claims go to the courts. There are measures that have been passed through this House, including the National Anti and Borders Act, where measures have not been implemented through that Act of Parliament, including the one stop shop, if I may say so, which actually would save the courts a lot of time and effort by bringing forward the single claims that this House voted through not that long ago, just last year, where replete claims could not keep on going back to the courts. It's really important, if I may say so, to the front bench and to ministers, that we press upon the government now to go backwards, to go forwards, to bring in these measures that have been passed through Acts of Parliament already. And dare I say it, there may be some in the um, legislation that's come since. But I would like to ask the Minister, in responding to this debate, how the Government is now going to act and prepare for any further challenges through this legislation that may come forward today, actually stands up to the repeat unmeritorious claims that keep coming through the courts, whether it's modern day slavery, we've heard about far too much, within the National Anti and Borders we put in clauses and measures to deal with that. We've also seen the summary of legal advice the government has received and read much of the other expert opinion highlighting this. So seeking assurances from ministers on the awareness he and colleagues have 
on the risks of challenge and how these are going to be mitigated, if I may say so, through the way this bill passes through the, the House in the conventional way is going to be absolutely crucial. We cannot have more cases bogged down in the courts and too many of us have worked through that as well. But also, if I may, we have a major problem on detention in this country and the lack of detention ca capability and size. There are plans with the new plan for immigration to introduce Greek-style reception centres. I would absolutely press upon the Minister of the Home Office to work with the Prime Minister and the, and the Treasury now to bring forward these sites, because otherwise we're going to see more Bibby stock homes, more Weathersfield sites, which quite frankly are not the answer to the solution. These Greek style reception centres will help with the fast tracking of processing claims and the fast tracking of removal of individuals that have no right to be in this country. And I would absolutely press the Minister in particular and the Home Secretary to now have an integrated approach so that we can deal with this national issue. The public voted for change, we want to deliver that change for them.